talk about the commodity of integrity all the time. But let me just ask you, if you think about integrity, what is it made up of? What's, what are the ingredients? What's the recipe for integrity? Most of us would very quickly say, well, integrity is all about honesty, right? But I think you would agree. We've all known people who were ruthlessly honest, but we didn't necessarily think of them as people of integrity. I would submit to you, there's more to integrity than just honesty okay and the very first item in the recipe is compassion you might not go there right off the bat as you think about integrity but walk with me down this road for a little bit I think you'll understand the word compassion literally means to stoop down to someone's level to get down where they are and see things eye to eye to understand their problems understanding what they're what they're going through and then being moved to act Jesus himself demonstrates great compassion, and he does so right off the bat. From his coming to earth, he demonstrates this kind of compassion. Now, the second ingredient I'll give to you is truth, and this is where all of us would typically start. We think about someone who tells the truth and who lives the truth. That's where we go to when we think about integrity, and that's true. Truth is a critical ingredient of integrity, which is kind of ironic because if we're honest, we'd have to admit that all of us lie, at least some of the time, right? There's a problem with lying, and it goes right to the heart of integrity. First of all, when I lie, I violate one of the Ten Commandments. Don't bear false witness, right? I don't do that. And let me just tell you right now, if you break commandments, your integrity is going to take a beating, okay? It's just, it's always going to work that way. Second thing that happens is when I lie to reduce the consequences, inevitably what happens to the consequences? They blow up. They blow up. It is a pay me now or pay me later situation with this, isn't it? Few things to value people like lying to them. It absolutely runs roughshod over them. In fact, conversely, few things add value to people like telling them the truth. Next ingredient, that sets us up, by the way, for this one, because the next ingredient is solving problems. If we handle the truth well, this is going to make this a lot easier. But let me just tell you something, and this may be a bit of a newsflash for you, okay? Life is hard. Is anybody stunned by that statement? Life is hard. Life is hard. You're going to have trouble. You're going to have problems. It's a guarantee. And it shouldn't come to you then as a great surprise that a person who has great integrity is also someone who solves problems with great maturity. You might get upset, you might need to react, but you don't need to go to a place where you're sinning in your response. The second thing this verse teaches us about this is simply deal with your problems promptly. Let me give you one more ingredient here uh, to this whole recipe for integrity, and that is identity. You see that? Now you might be thinking, what do you mean by identity? What does that have to do with integrity? I would submit it might be the most important one on the list, okay? Sometimes we go through life and we set ourselves up to be God. We just say, hey, I'm basically God. Now, how do we do that? You, you probably don't consciously make that decision. But if you look back at Genesis chapter 2, that very first sin that humanity gets involved in, you know what they were doing? They were setting themselves up to be God. God said, don't eat from this tree, right? This is what is wrong. In other words, God defined what is right and what is wrong. What happens with Adam and Eve? They look at the same tree, the Bible says, and they saw it and they said it was good for food. In other words, God doesn't know what he's talking about, this whole right and wrong business. I know what is right and wrong. It is not our job to decide what is right and wrong. That's God's job. You know what our job is? To obey or disobey. That's what we get to do. That's what we choose to do. Okay? Sometimes, though, we get our identity a little bit confused, and we set ourselves up to be God, and we start making decisions about what is right and what is wrong on our own. And when we start doing that, you all, your integrity is going to take a beating. As a child of God, what am I fixed on? I'm fixed on Him. He is the standard of what is pure and impure, right and wrong. That's on Him. My decision, my job, to decide to obey. I'm God's child. 
And so when I'm at the kind of at a crossroads on my integrity, I've got a decision to make. My decision is simply to ask this, what would God have me do in this moment? And when I make that choice, my integrity is going to come through unscathed because I'm behaving within the context of my identity in Christ. And as a Christ follower, then that really makes it simple for me because I, all I need to do is constantly flex back on what it means to be a child of God. I'm going to remind myself that I am a child of God. He decides what is right and wrong. I decide if I'm going to obey or disobey. I'm going to choose to obey because that helps me clearly model integrity. Just work your way all through it. All four pieces, all four ingredients. Am I a person of integrity? Do I show compassion, truth, problem solving, identity? Am I a person of integrity? When I look at all four of those. Now I want you to flex back for just a moment on the idea of identity for just a little bit longer. And I say that because some of you all are not in a relationship with Christ right now. Your identity is not that as a child of God. And the Bible teaches us that if that's the case, if that's where we are, then in effect we've set ourselves up to be a competitor to God. We're effectively saying, God, I'm running my own show. And that decision separates us from God. It puts us in a position where we're sinning against Him. And that has huge implications for who we are. So I would just challenge you to really put that sensation to the test. Really challenge yourself, is that where I am? Have I ever made a decision to be in a relationship with God, to be His child? And let me just tell you, there's no better day to make that decision than today. Just simply say, Lord, today I want to begin my relationship as your child. And then come out and let's talk about that. Out of a place we call Fresh Start, right out there on the runway. Let's have that conversation. Let's take a moment, let's pray right now together as we think about integrity. Lord, we thank you for the people of integrity that you've placed in our life. Virtually everybody in this room can see someone, can think of someone that they think of as a person of great integrity. And Lord, we know that the, the future of our family and its trajectory in Christ depends in some part on our being people of integrity, of modeling the gospel, and of being thoroughly your child in front of our kids. They see everything we do. Our spouse sees everything we do. Our neighbors, they see what we do. And our testimony, our witness, won't go forward with great clarity if we are not people of integrity. So challenge us, Lord, on each of these four areas to be a person of great integrity. And Lord, I pray for those who are in this room who are not in a relationship with you. I pray, Lord, that that changes today, that their identity switches from someone who's placed themselves in the position of being God to being instead a child of God. There's so much freedom in being in you. And I pray that people make that choice today. We love you, Lord. We thank you for your word and for what you've taught us through it. In Jesus' name we pray. And everyone agreed and said,